Hey guys, Larissa here and this video is about summertime. What to do as beekeeping tasks in the summertime as well as what to do when it gets super hot out. So first of all, the overall beekeeping tasks. You want to prevent swarming, which is make sure there's room in the brood boxes. Especially those two boxes in the beehive, make sure there's two to three empty frames in there. You don't know what to do with those empty frames? Put them in a weak beehive. Make a split. Give them away to another beekeeper. Whatever, we've addressed this in other videos you can check out, but just know you need to prevent swarming. The other thing you need to do is add empty honey supers on top, if needed, so that the bees have somewhere to put their honey. Third thing is do a month monthly mite test. It only takes 10 minutes, once a month, maybe the first weekend of the month. Just make sure your mite levels are not over seven. You don't want them over seven or you're gonna have to put in a treatment. Under seven is usually okay because you don't want to treat when honey is coming in. Okay, so now we're going to get to those hot temperatures. What to do when it's super hot out. You might see bearding on your hive, which is a lot of bees clustered outside. You might see robbing. You might see a lot of dead bees outside your front entrance. You might see these oily, super dark black looking bees walking around that do not look healthy at all. That's what happens in the summertime when it's really hot out. When it gets 95, 100 degrees, that's what happens. So I'm going to tell you what goes on in the beehive because I think that'll help ease your stress level right now. So inside a beehive, the bees want it to be about 95 degrees. That is the best temperature for the brood. If it gets too hot or too cool, the brood will suffer. However, honeybees can withstand temperatures well over 100 degrees and be fine as an adult. So when it gets hotter than 95 degrees within the beehive, the bees cool down. And how they do that is they go and get water. They will find water, they'll put it in their honey sack, they'll go back to the hive, pass it off to another bee. That bee will take that water and spit it out. Like literally spit it out all over the comb. Then there will be other bees on the comb fanning their wings really fast. When they do this, they're essentially misting the hive and creating an air conditioning system. A lot of bees will get out of the hive and go outside which is when you start to see that bearding. And that's to also free up space in the hive and to allow ventilation and airflow. And a lot of those bees outside the hive by the entrances are going to be flapping their wings really fast. And that is to additionally create airflow and help with ventilation. So when you have your hand to stay right outside that front entrance, or even if you take the lid off and hover your hand like a quarter inch above that open beehive, you will often feel air like a breeze, and that is the bees creating airflow. So there's not much to worry about when this happens. I mean, it's not, sorry, mosquitoes. Ugh, got me right in the forehead. There's not much you can do as a beekeeper except to provide a water source for them. Now, you want a water source that ideally has rainwater because that is uh, much better to the bees and then the tap water you're going to give them which might be chlorinated and have fluoride in it and then bees aren't really going to like that water source as much and you also want somewhere for the bees to land so you can get one of those troughs that they use for feeding cows and horses and put some cattails and water lilies and stuff in it and that's a great way for the bees to have a water source that you don't have to continue to add to all the time. You can have a bird bath, you can have a fountain, you can just have like a big ceramic planter filled with water. You just want someone for, somewhere for them to land. So that could be big rocks, that could be uh, sticks, or you can just put wine corks in there. Wine corks float and that gives the bees a place to land. Now to prevent mosquitoes from going crazy in this water, you can either have a small dish that you're constantly um, refilling every few days, or you can have those little mosquito eating fish inside your container to, to keep that from getting out of control. So what uh, studies have shown actually is that bees prefer to go to a water source that's further from the hives rather than closer. And especially if you have a neighbor with a pool who's complaining that a lot of bees are visiting her pool, you might wanna put your water source, you can have one close to the hives too, but put one as far away from the hives as you can get them. And then for the people with pools, 
Unfortunately, bees just like chlorinated water and it's not good for them, but they like it. So having this rainwater with a way that they can easily get to it could potentially seem uh, better to them than the pool water and they might not go to the pool anymore but they might still go to the pool and really the only thing to do is to you can get a towel and drape it over the ledge of the pool so that it goes into the pool water a little bit and that at least gives the bees a place to land to get to the water and so that kind of gives the bees like the little bee area of the pool which one will prevent people from having to scoop up all of those dead bees floating in their pool and also give the bees a spot preferably a spot that people don't use a lot you know like a spot that's not near the ladder or the diving board or something okay so dearth and robbing. Now you're gonna have nectar seasons where lots of foods coming in and then you're gonna have times when the bloom stops and there might be other stuff blooming but there's not a ton of food for the bees and for one they get cranky and a little aggressive and this only lasts usually a week or two so it's temporary and the other thing that's going to happen is they're going to start to rob each other they start to rob each other this is not fun to see you're going to see dead bees in front of the entrance you might see uh, oily black bees that look really sickly those are bees that have been robbing some food source and you're going to see maybe bees being very aggressive towards each other in the entrance so there's not much to do about robbing you can make sure you're not leaving bee equipment outside and honeycomb and stuff outside to attract other bees you can um make sure your bees have food inside you should not be harvesting honey at this time of year you make sure that they have enough food so they're not starving and if they don't then you can put a sugar water feeder inside and um, you can put entrance reducers on the hive so these are little wooden blocks that just um, cover up some of that main entrance so that there's not a large opening um, if you have upper entrances or any other entrance within the beehive where bees are coming and going you can plug them up so there's only one entrance and so this gives the bees less space for them to guard but if it's really hot out your main concern should be allowing them to have proper ventilation not preventing robbing and so just um, if you're going to put an entrance reducer on and it's really hot out make sure you have a screened bottom or um, don't put that entrance reducer on because it, you, you could be doing more harm than good. And that's the other thing I want to talk about. As a beekeeper, your job is to be their assistant, to take a little bit of extra honey and to help them deal with mites because mites did not evolve with all of these honeybees, especially these European ones. They evolved with the Asian honeybees. So these European honeybees that we have here in North America don't deal with mites well, at least not most of them. So the main job you have is to help them deal with it and to also help them winterize properly because we put them in these man-made beehives that we have. When it comes to the robbing and the dearth and it being hot out, sometimes being an over-eager beekeeper is the worst thing for your bees. So trust that they know what they're doing and that they're strong enough that they can handle some robbing, that they can handle a low nectar season and a dearth and don't bother them too much because you can actually do more harm than good. So I wanted to tell you about this quick study that scientists did. They put a heat lamp next to a beehive to see what bees did when the hive heated up quite a bit and they found that bees went and they gathered water and they cooled down the hive. They took that water source away and heated the hive up again and they found that the hive was not able to cool it down all the way. They also found that worker bees were walking around with their proboscis sticking out, which is like their tongue thing, and they were tapping other worker bees with their proboscis. And that was their way of telling them, hey, we are having a hard time finding water, or really they're just saying, we need more help gathering water. Come help us. And so, I hope that helps to alleviate some of your concerns about the summertime things that you're seeing going on. I know as a beekeeper you want to help your bees and you want them to not have problems. But bees have been around for way longer than we have and they were just fine without us. So trust that they can handle it. And to be honest, I know this isn't what you want to hear, but not every beehive survives and they're not all supposed to because they're not going to make it through the winter 
uh, if they're weak in the spring and summer. Uh, only the stronger hives are going to survive. Maybe best case scenario, 75% of your hives will survive over the winter. So babying your weak hives is not really helping them that much because they're not going to make it through the winter. And in the fall, actually, you should be merging them with your, weak, with your stronger hives anyway. By babying weak hives that are having a hard time getting through your spring and summer when they should be thriving, you're actually just using a beekeeping equipment for not a good reason. What you should be doing is accounting for this weak hive that you already know you're going to lose. And you should merge that hive with a stronger hive or requeen or split that stronger hive, merge it with the weak hive and put in a new queen. Because essentially as a beekeeper, you want to never have to buy bees ever again after your first year. And the way to do that is to split your hives to go into winter with more hives than what you want in the spring. So as a beekeeper, say you bought two hives, one hive strong and one hive weak. It's very common. Most of the time when you get a package or a nuke, you get one strong one one weak one. It just seems to be how it goes. That strong one's thriving, the weak one is really struggling. That weak one is probably not going to survive the winter. And right now it's July and you already can see the hive is weak and they're not going to make it. So instead of just babying them and seeing how it goes, what I would do is to pinch the queen and buy one from as close as possible as you can to the breeders in your area from queen breeders so that you have good local bees that are used to dealing with your climate zone and put her in your hive. And you take that strong hive, take a few frames, one to two frames of capped brood and put it in your weak hive. That weak hive will then have a way greater chance of surviving and getting through the winter. And if you really want to make sure that you're um, going to go into spring of next year and not have to buy any bees, you should split that strong hive so now you have three hives that are, none of them are big, but three hives that are medium in size that have a good chance of surviving the winter. And that way you have a 25% loss. Say maybe you lose one of those hives. You're going and starting spring of next year, right where you are right now with two hives. And that's what a beekeeper should be doing. You should not have to buy more bees down the road. Another thing you might be seeing is a lot of small hive beetles right now walking around. Their population was real low in the winter, but now they're able to bounce back and they're all walking around in the hive, those little black bugs. The bees can sting them, but they can corral them into sections. You can put traps in the hive if you like, but a hive that has no mite problems will not have a beetle problem. They are strong enough to handle the beetles and believe me, I, I know this, here in Hawaii we have a huge beetle population because we have no frost and so there's always lots of beetles and when I worked for commercial apiary with 4,000 hives they told me this and I tested it myself and found the same thing a hive that is strong and does not have a mite problem can handle the beetles all on their own and you don't need to do anything to help them hives that are weak cannot handle beetles so down the line, what you would want to think about for next year is one, making sure you have that water source out before it gets hot out. Because once the bees have a water source, they usually like to stick with it and to not pick a new one later on. Second thing to do is if you're getting temperatures that are like over 100 degrees, you should have your bees in the shade. Now, don't try to move them now. Don't try to move them before the winter time because it's good to keep them in the sun when it gets cold out. But in the early spring, before the bees start leaving the hive again next year, move them to a shady spot and that will help keep them cool. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to share with you guys that I thought was funny and isn't really something you need to know, but for those that want to <laughs> hear this. So not only do bees gather water and bring it back to the hive to spit out, to miss the hive, but some bees actually turn into living water bottles and they will fill their bodies up with water and just hang out in the hive for a couple days full of water as like just storage 
because they can't put it in the cells, it would pour right out. So they're just like these live storage water bottles hanging out in the hive. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you have other tips, also leave them in the comments. And 